Looks like we've started. Today's episode is a follow-up, a kind of follow-up of the one I did, uh, the last one on the uh, paintings or multi or mixed me. I call it multimedia, but mixed media. Uh, attention, lucky dogs. Um, and it's to answer the question that people ask when they see certain Gershow paintings and and they don't understand why he did it okay and so that's uh that's what we're going to talk about today and in particular it's about the paintings that he did uh while he was sitting in his chair uh, day after day in the studio looking out on the roofs outside his uh studio door and windows okay now the reproduction of the day is this realistic one done in 1944 and uh, got to look at it to make sure and um, this is a reproduction you can get it at the Trident bookstores in Boulder they have an online store it's a recent addition to the product line okay All right uh, its title is in Spanish Los Dias de la Calle de Gabino Barrera and in English it's the days of the Gabino Barrera Street, I guess you could say. I mean, it's a place where they used to get together, uh, the surrealist group that Russia was a member of. So the first one is this one uh, done in the early 40s, um, called Silencio. It, in the book, Risking the Abstract, Dana Dupont said it was uh, Cubist style. Um, and question is what was he doing where why did he do this was he gonna think about being a cubist that's the only one he ever did okay but i think i know the answer to why he did it which is what we'll see a little later another example is this one which you already talked about in the last episode attention lucky dogs all right it's uh kind of a weird mishmash between collage and his usual style. Uh, it's what I call mixed media, acrylic, ink, etc. Uh, this one's another one he did. These I think he did in the 70s or 80s. Uh, I showed this to a friend of mine and she was kind of horrified saying, why, why is he doing this? What happened? Why is somebody who's an abstract artist paints something like this? Is he going back to, you know, figurative painting? What, what's the deal? Um, it's another example. And, you know, and my answer, I usually say, well, I don't know. And who cares? But actually, there is there's there's a reason for this. OK, so. As I mentioned in the Denver Art Museum talk, it's the first episode on the channel. You know, he's well known for, for let's say, three er periods of his work, which is surrealism, um, you know, the early Altiplano Maya and the Greek, okay? He called it abstract surrealism. Um, that could be the theme of an entire different episode. Not going to go into that. Uh, a lot of people didn't like that. I just called it abstract art, but actually I think he's he's right about that. So where does the Altiplano Maya comes from? Just you know, as I mentioned the other uh, episode, is the brown area is the Alto Plani, Alto Plano, which means uh, Altiplano, which means uh, high plains, and then the green is the Maya. Okay, it's the culture of the high plains, which is well known in the archaeology um, community. So I don't, in English, it would be the high plains style. But, I mean, I don't know if other people use the term, but high plains style could be like Clint Eastwood, high plains drifter or something. That's not what we're trying to evoke, all right? All right, and so, you know, this is what he's known for. There he is standing behind the painting while it's being photographed, and then the back, are those trees, which we will see a little bit more of later. Okay. Um, this is 1986 or something like that. 
All right, so just sort of context here is that, you know, this, the, this is the house they bought in 40, uh, 47. Then he built the studio on the top, the third floor, you can see it there. Um, and it was the second one he built. So this one was built in the early 60s. The first one was was sort of not very well built. I think it had some problems. Okay. Um, you can see it from the other side. This, you can see that whole structure on the top was the studio area. So it was an entire floor, all right, in which where he worked every day. All right, so, you know, just think, so this is sort of like the theme. The theme of this talk is what he was seeing every day in his life, okay, uh, is a contrast to what he painted in, in the Antiplano Maya style or Greek or whatever. Okay, so you get up in the morning, you read this newspaper. I mentioned this in the last episode, Lucky Dogs. This was the newspaper record in Mexico uh, up until 1970, Excelsior. That's what everybody read. Uh, had a good cultural section. Um, there's a whole story about this newspaper, what happened to it. Okay, then he'd go upstairs to the second floor and he had to go outside to a patio and uh, up on the way to the studio. And over the years, they had cats. This was one cat named Morris. Uh, that's what everybody named him. He was uh, rescued. And those are those bougainvilleas, typical uh, bougainvillea of, of, the, of the area. Uh, you know, it's gorgeous color, Mexican. Sometimes they call it Rosa Mexicana, um, Mexican um, pink, I guess. All right, and there he is again on the way up to the studio. So this is, you know, the every day is what he saw every day, every day. So getting to the, so that's the entrance to the studio. So that ladder on the side was to get up to the roof because, you know, everybody has to have water tanks. If you didn't have water tanks, you run out of water. I think that's less so now. So that was like the maintenance thing. All right, and. Um, so this is a photo that uh, I took, you know, this is like the early 70s. This is like maybe seven years after he did this, the second version of the studio. It's a lot less cluttered than like in later years. All right. And then the, the thing he's, you know, he's always, he liked a lot of books and he'd like to, you know, look at art, art, art history, architectural history. So this is very important to him. And this is where he worked every day at that desk there. All right. Here's another view of the, of the books. This is like only a fifth or a sixth of the entire collection that he had all over the house. So you can see here, uh, there was this Chinese kite there, then he had some African stuff, then there was his award from the movies there, which was next to the African piece. Okay, and then, you know, bits and pieces of stuff. Um, you know, crafts, uh, Mexican crafts, right? Okay, so here, here is, uh, you know, he'd sit down and he'd design his paintings, okay, since he was a designer, as I like to say, art by design, sort of snappy um, motto there, and then he would Produce the foundations in that room in the side of the painting, and then he'd sit at that easel uh, every day. He did that pro on that that easel or a similar one that he had for 40 years. Every day, every day, he painted. Okay, so all right, so you know there he is. Uh, typical, you know, what am I going to do next? All right, now in the back there, you can see. I mean, it's hard to see is the, uh, I mean, barely are the trees called Fresno, Fresnos, and the street was called Fresnos because they had, so that was his view every day for 40 years, right? Um, all right, there is, you know, this is, again. All right, now this is a view from the outside looking in, so this is, you know, he's trying to figure out, there's a typical painting that he's working on. Uh, and he's trying to figure out what he's going to do next. All right, so that where he painted on, his piece of glass would mix the oil. 
all right? Uh, then underneath, then you add all the the uh, the brushes and that kind of stuff. So this is so so one has to just think about this. If you're an artist and you sit at this place for forty years every day, let's say five days a week, and sometimes in the weekend, um, it can be a little hard to take. I guess you could say it can get boring. You know, he now establishes his style. He became well known for it. He decided what to do. All right. And a good description of this activity or this way of being or this life uh, is somebody I discovered recently. He wrote a book called The Practice by Seth Godin. And he talks about this as the practice is you do this every day. You don't wait until the muse gets you and you, you know, of course, you can be inspired or whatever. But by doing it, you think about things, you create things, you get insights, whatever, all right? Uh, but but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a discipline, okay? And I'm not sure I could do this for 40 years. So that, of course, I sit in front of a computer terminal for 40 years, but all right? But so I think once in a while, the guy needs a break. You know, uh, maybe got into a, a, an impasse or something. He doesn't know what to do. So he whipped this. This is a painting that he did. Um, and see the date. These are the these are the Fresnos, which he could see. And now you can now, if you didn't know what this meant, you know, it's hard to figure out what, what this. But of course, these are the trees. And then this black thing, it's the wall at the edge of the the terrace, and then that brown one is the other wall. So, um, you know, so he just said, okay, I'm going to paint. I look at this all the time, so I'm going to paint kind of a quick thing. This is in contrast to his usual technique, which is extremely methodical. All right. So let's go back to as going up to the studio. If you stand up there, if you go up to the studio and stand at the entrance there and turn around, this is what you're going to see. This is the next door neighbor's uh, garden, right? And um, so, you know, it's again, it's uh, just just sit down and paint it, right? I wouldn't say zip it out, but you know, not do the geometry design stuff, right? And there's somebody obviously is the gardener or somebody there lying in, underneath the tree or something, right? And there were, now this house, for those who, like in the late 90s or 2000s or whatever it was, I guess the late 90s, was bought by another well-known artist, Mexico, named Jose Luis Cuevas, and he remodeled this. So it doesn't look like that now, but that looked like this, you know, in the 80s, okay? Uh, and then, and then another neighbor's garden, which was in the previous painting to the right on the other side of the wall, you can't see it. Another neighbor had, uh, you know, it's very so you decide to do this. So that's why I call views from the studio. Okay. And uh, okay, so this was the view. So if you stood at the entrance of the studio, now that's what it looks like now, or probably now different, but this, this is what he, looked at for 40 years. Um, you can notice the water tanks uh, here. Okay, and uh, so then he did uh, so then he did the view out on that roof, okay, and those were the water tanks that existed before. And that thing that looks like a, a little house is actually the chimney. It was the style that they the chimneys. Of course you have the TV antennas there. Okay. Water tanks again. One, I guess they were replaced and then they left the old one. Those were made out of metal. So I just left it there. I, okay. Again, the same thing. Right. So I think he just did these to, you know, break the routines or what I like to call recharge the batteries. Uh, of course, uh, and I know this for a fact, he never stopped thinking about what he was painting. So while he was painting this, he was thinking about the other stuff. Uh, also, the technique that he used is that he would paint, you know, a layer on the abstract paintings and they had to let it sit and maybe 
you know, he had time on his hands uh, between two or three, you know, paintings that he was doing, and there was had to let the the oil dry or whatever it does set. So he decided to do this, All right? And there's another one is called a scene from uh, a view of San Angel. So you know, this could be maybe the roofs again. There's the Fresno trees in the back, possibly, right? So he went a little abstract. Okay, now, this is another one. Question is, why is he doing it? This is a taco stand, probably in San Angel, in the in downtown, well, so-called downtown, in the center of the town in San Angel. And this was a typical place in the probably 50s, 40s, whatever. This is typical, you go in, get your tacos, or you get your meal, okay, uh, along the street. So this is something else they saw. So, um, Let's go back to this one. So um, there's an interesting sort of, uh, I wouldn't call it, you know, habit that he had, which was what he decided to paint had, uh, in a sense, a lot to do with the profession at the time. So what do I mean by that? So I uh, flipped ahead here to the... So this cat, this cat was done in the 40s. So this is when he was in the movies. This is called the blue cat of the, of the cat of the uh, London street. In the area in Mexico, the streets are all named after principal cities of Mexico City. And so the Calle de Londres, all right? So I think he had an apartment there. I don't know what he was doing there. And then and, and the back is the, uh, the Independence Monument called the Angel, right? This was actually near where he was probably born. Well, he was born on the Calle de Marsella, okay? Probably because I wasn't there. But anyway, um, so what am I getting at? The reason he did these paintings is because, you know, he had a, he had a profession in the beginning, which is the movies. And then he would do a painting like this uh, because it was what I called painting on the side. It was what I call as a regular painting. Just sit down and paint it like the painting in the back there. Uh, it was getting together with the friends and he painted, you know, as sort of a part of his life, all right? What he saw in his everyday life, all right? Uh, but then when the movies went away, uh, he his new profession, you might say, was this Greek altiplano period, all right? But he still had the habit of wanting to paint on the side. So that's why I did these views from the studio, right? And then the scents, and also the dogs, you know, the the dog, uh, uh, the lucky dog one, okay? In the sense, it's, you're seeing a kind of a snippet of, it's more intimate of his life. You're actually seeing what he was living and what he was looking at, you know, in his life, well as the abstract paintings and the Greek paintings is, you don't see that. It's, it's in the sense behind a wall. People talk about, you know, that it's a wall and you can't see what's behind. But in the sense, with these paintings, you're seeing into his life a little bit, a little snippet. I mean, he didn't do that on purpose. He just did it because he liked to paint. And this is what he did. Okay. And so I hope this helps. The point is, these paintings were not something he was thinking about. Uh, to start a new period in his life. It's just something that he wanted to do on the spur of the moment, um, do some practice, and that's it. Okay, so I hope this helps, maybe. Um, so there's my website, www.guntergershow.com. Um, I got some biographical stuff I wrote this year. Um, then there are the prints that are for sale. Um, there, the links will be at the bottom. I'm sounding like all other YouTubers now. Make sure you click on the links and find out, you know, all this kind of stuff. All right. And um, the prints are selling. I wouldn't say they're selling like hotcakes, but they are selling. So if you're interested in buying one, you know, maybe you should decide because 
As I say, once they're gone, they're gone. And the reproductions are doing well uh, at the Trident Bookstore. Uh, so that's, you know, the selling more and more as time goes on. And with that, I withdraw.